United stand. Harry Maguire, what a signing he will be for Manchester United. Forget the negativity and jump on board. He will be a good signing for Manchester United. I firmly believe it. I think you're talking about a lad here who was at Hull a few years ago, who went to Leicester, who is now England's best centre-back. Oh, how the tables have turned. Once the most expensive defender in the world and most promising centre-back talent in the Premier League, Harry Maguire is now a laughing stock and been labelled by many as the worst defender in the league. So what happened? Well, in this video, we'll look at some of the often unspoken reasons why Harry Maguire failed at Manchester United. In 2019, United's defense was bad. Like, really bad. Like, not even in the top half of the league bad. They finished behind the likes of Palace, Everton, and even Newcastle before they were good. Things were a little better when you looked at expected goals against, but they still were far from even a good Premier League team, let alone a team of United's aspirations. The centre back quartet of Victor Lindelof, Chris Smalling, Phil Jones, and Eric Bailly when he wasn't injured or suspended, simply wasn't good enough. United needed an upgrade, and they needed one desperately. Allow me to introduce to you Jacob Harry Maguire. We won't go back all the way to his Sheffield and Hull days, but all you need to know from then is that he was an absolute baller. No, I'm not joking. At 19, he was Sheffield United's player of the season as he helped them to promotion. Five years later, he won the same award this time for Hull City as they made the return to the Premier League. Maguire was a promising young player. That's why Leicester came in and paid nearly £14 million for him. This is where our story really begins. At Leicester, Maguire had the chance to show his ability on a much bigger stage and he took that opportunity and ran with it, starting all 38 games for the Foxes. He was tall and strong, hardworking and bold. Very in-demand qualities for any centre back. Maguire though was able to marry those qualities with some more modern centre back characteristics, most notably his ball carrying. All of this led to an England call up and a frankly exceptional World Cup for the man from Sheffield. After this, team started circling as he was arguably the most in-demand young centre back in the world. Don't believe me? Here's a quote from an article in The Athletics saying Pep Guardiola, yes that Pep Guardiola wanted Harry Maguire as Vincent Company's replacement. I'm telling you, this guy was a serious player. United were determined to be the ones who ended up with him though. Leicester played their part well and knew that United both had the money to spend and the desperation to spend it. In the end, a world record was broken and nobody believed it was deserved. Maguire's start to his United career wasn't well received by many fans and it wasn't even his fault. His first season seemed to put many of those fans at ease though. Maguire started all 38 games for United as they maintained a top 3 defence right up there with Liverpool and Manchester City. Regardless of how they got there, the plan had worked. Maguire, playing his favourite position as a left-sided centre-back, was a dominant force in the box for United. He was aggressive and secure in 1v1 duels and had established himself as a leader, both on and off the pitch. Things started to go awry that summer though. That summer, he was detained in Greek police custody for the alleged assault on a police officer. It was also reported that Cristiano Ronaldo's return did not help solidify and reassure Maguire's position in the team. Nevertheless, these are issues that humans, no less footballers, have to deal with sometimes, and Maguire seemed determined to do just that. Things really started to turn when United travelled to the King Power to play Leicester City though. Maguire made an error that led to Leicester's first, and their second, and arguably their third, and definitely their fourth. It's fair to say Maguire wasn't solely at fault for all of those goals, but he had a part to play. Things were arguably just as bad when United hosted Liverpool at Old Trafford a little later. He made an error leading to their first goal, and their second, and maybe one or two more, as Liverpool ran rampant and put five past United. 
This started a string of bad performances, as Maguire's confidence slipped deeper and deeper down the drain. He still maintained his aggressive and positive nature, but the errors just kept piling up. It also didn't help that he had David De Gea behind him. While De Gea was a fantastic shot stopper for United, he was terrible sweeping and never ventured too far from his line. This meant that United's centre backs had more of the field to cover leaving them more exposed and prone to mistakes. Then there's his distribution ability, or lack thereof. De Gea often put his centre backs under pressure, with poorly directed or timed passes, often forcing Maguire to play while facing his goal rather than up the pitch. This is a problem for Maguire. While he's good when all the play is in front of him and he can see the whole picture, he's not so good when he has to look behind him and turn quickly. It also didn't help that he had three different managers in his first four years at the club. The third of which, Eric Den Haag, adamantly insisted on moving Maguire from his preferred left centre back position to the right. This proved to be disastrous as United lost heavily to Brighton and Brentford in their first two games of the season and Maguire got just six most starts in the league after. It has to be said that fans and social media have played a key role in Maguire's downfall. During the 2021-22 Premier League season, the Alan Turing Institute conveyed a survey. The survey found that Maguire received nearly 9,000 abusive tweets. This placed him second in the Premier League, only behind Cristiano Ronaldo. And considering Ronaldo's following and social media presence dwarfs Maguire's, this isn't surprising. What was surprising was how far United fans were willing to go to vent their displeasure. I mean, he even received a bomb threat in April 2022. It's clear then that his time at United should be cut short, and at the time of recording this, it seems a move to West Ham is imminent. Under David Moyes, Maguire will be asked to play a role he's far more comfortable with. Playing with a deeper line and much more of the play in front of him, we should see a reduction in errors from Maguire, and he'd fit right in with the big bruising brutes David Moyes has assembled. Even his ball carrying could be useful when teams try to press them. It feels like the type of move that could get Maguire's career back on track. At 30, there isn't much time left. But if he can somehow carve himself into a cult hero in East London, I don't think anyone can be upset at that.